of the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is day... It is day 102 of the Trump presidency, 1,358 days to go, but who's counting? <laughs> now... A little notch on my wall. Now... Trump has repeatedly said that this 100 days thing is totally arbitrary, okay? Totally unimportant. And to prove how unimportant it is, he took out a TV ad, he cut a cake on Air Force One, and he held a rally in Pennsylvania. The theme of that rally? Promises made, promises kept. Which is better than their original slogan, promises made, never mind, never said it, fake news, watch Fox and Friends. <laughs> so, so long, it's nice, it's got a rhythm. Yeah. Uh, he also proved just how unimportant this was with a bunch of interviews over the weekend. First, on Friday, he talked with Reuters about his new job. Well, I loved my, I, I loved my previous life. I loved my previous life. I had so many things going. I, I, I actually, this is more work than in my previous life. I thought it would be easier. How about that? He thought it would be How about easy. that? It turns out being leader of the free world is harder than licensing your name to luxury meat. <laughs> Delicious. But uh, that's not all. He trumped on. I thought it was more of a... I'm a details-oriented person. I think you would say that. But I do miss my old life. We all do, sir. I get why he misses it. I get it, man, because uh -huh. in his old life, he could spend his days golfing, insulting people on Twitter, and hanging out with his family. Also, now... <laughs> and that's not the only reason he's bummed. It's also because I can't drive anymore. <laughs> and you know he drove all the time. He's a great yeah, driver. Yeah. I mean, just look how comfortable he is behind the wheel. <laughs> that's exactly how you drive. Hands at seven and five, mouth open, screaming. Ah! Ah! Red light! Thanks, Obama! Ah! 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 Open road. Of course, he addressed the proudest achievement of his presidency, it existing. Because in the middle of discussing Chinese-American relations with the Reuters reporters, he stopped to hand out copies of what he said were the latest figures from the 2016 electoral map, saying, Pretty good, right? The red is obviously us. <laughs> the blue, obviously Democrats, except when it's water. Hard to tell. <laughs> Aquaman, personal friend. Great guy. <laughs> There's... <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> There's even a picture. I colored these myself. These are all... <laughs> These are all placemats. I had them. I had them. Can you put that photo back up? Can I see that again? This is my impression of a T-Rex. Little hands. <laughs> like this. Like... Uh, like... Like this. <laughs> what? <laughs> Everything's in here. <laughs> Everything's in here. Yeah. I'm proud to say that the official defining 100 Days interview took place right here on CBS with the nation face himself, John Dickerson, yesterday. And he started off with North Korea. Mr. President, you and the administration said to North Korea, don't test a missile. They have tested a missile. Is the pressure not working? Well, I didn't say don't test a missile. He's going to have to do what he has to do. So our official policy is you do you. <laughs> what can I say? Hitler gonna Hitler. Kim Jong gonna un. Uh, then, uh, that's not this, out of this. Uh, then uh, our friend John Dickerson asked Trump what he thought of Kim Jong un. I can tell you this, and a lot of people don't like when I say it, but he was a young man of 26 or 27 when he took over from his father. A lot of people, I'm sure, tried to take that power away, whether it was his uncle or anybody else. And he was able to do it. So obviously, he's a pretty smart cookie. So, Trump thinks, no, no, Trump thinks Kim Jong-un is a smart cookie, to which all of North Korea replied, cookie? <laughs> he's a monster. The point is, he's a monster. Fat little monster. Now, 
Dickerson gamely tried to get Trump to commit to releasing his tax returns finally, but it was the same old song and dance about under audit. So, I'd like to rephrase the question. Mr. President, can you talk about your tax returns as a metaphor for your penis? I have a very big tax return. You've seen the pictures. My tax return is probably higher than that from the floor. When you look at other people's tax return, even other wealthy people, their tax return is this thing. My tax return is this high. We get it. You have a huge tax return. But you know what would be nice? A full release. Later. So I've heard. So I've heard. I wouldn't know. I'm flattered, but I'm not into that scene. <laughs> Later in the same interview, Trump gave Dickerson a tour of the Oval Office. This is the Resolute Desk. It's a great desk with a phenomenal history. This was FDR, it was Ronald Reagan, it was Kennedy. Uh, there's some great presidents behind this desk. Yes, and if you put your ear to it like a seashell, you can hear all of them rolling in their graves. <laughs> and President Trump <laughs> and President Trump explained that visitors are awed by the power of the Oval Office. In one case, I won't say who, somebody you know very well, the head of a major, major company, the person came into the Oval Office and started to cry. This is a tough person, by the way. Came into the Oval Office and started to cry. Mr. President, if I came to the Oval Office and saw you sitting behind the desk, I'd cry too. Now, uh, there was a, a nice moment when John Dickerson talked about some previous president's thoughts with Trump, other men who have stood in that room and, and their thoughts about the responsibilities of the presidency. But I'm not quite sure that Donald Trump understood the message. George W. Bush said the reason the Oval Office is round is there are no corners you can hide in. Well, there's truth to that. There's truth to that. There are certainly no corners. That's what he meant. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's be positive. At least he knows his shapes. <laughs> he knows oval. Oh, yeah, okay. He oh. knows the Pentagon uh, and rhombus because it's Reince Priebus's middle name. <laughs> Reince Rhombus Priebus. <laughs> and on the subject of previous presidents, Dickerson asked Trump if he still stands by claims that President Obama wiretapped him. You stand by that claim about him? I don't stand by anything. It's true. <laughs> he doesn't stand by anything except the dressing room door at Miss USA pageant. <laughs> but... <laughs> Hiya! Boo! <laughs> Who needs some lotion? <laughs> but... Based on a true story, that joke. But... <laughs> Dickerson asked his question anyway. But I'm asking you, because you don't want it you to be fake news. I want to hear it from President Trump. Me. You don't have to ask me. Why not? Because I have my own opinions. You can have your own opinions. But I want to know your opinions. You're the President of the United okay. States. It's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> can't talk anymore. No, can't talk anymore. Important, important president to work here. Got a, got a president all over these papers here. Let's see, let's see, what's this? Yep, still paper, still blank paper. Nothing on there. Let's see, let me read this presidential briefing. Yep, I got the president, I got the briefing right here. I got the briefing, yes, it's true. We gotta, we gotta do something. Yes, oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, John, can't talk, gotta, gotta do something, gotta. Got to do something about the nation of Sharministan. Sorry about that. We must wipe them off the map. Uh huh. Is Dickerson still over there? I don't want to look. Is he still there? Bring, 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 bring. Sorry. Hello, hello. Yes. Got his very secure phone. Yes. Uh, this is Donald Trump. John, I got to take them. I got to take this call. It's the president of Asia calling. Hello. <laughs> really important. John, I can't hear you. I've got a banana in my ear. Obviously, I'm joking. Something was on that paper, all right?
Do we have a reverse shot, Jim? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I gotta say, walking out in the middle of a sentence wasn't even the president's biggest insult to John Dickerson. And I think actually I've been very consistent. You know, it's very funny when the fake media goes out, you know, which we call the mainstream media, which sometimes I must say is you. But when the you fake. Mean me personally or. Uh, your show. I love your show. I call it Deface the Nation. Really? Oh. Donald Trump, John Dickerson is a fair minded journalist and one of the most competent people who will ever walk into your office. And you treat him like that? Now, John Dickerson has way too much dignity to trade insults with the President of the United States to his face. But I, sir, <laughs> am no John Dickerson. <laughs> and when you... Okay? All right? Let me introduce you... Let me introduce you to something we call the Tiffany Way. When you insult one member of the CBS family, you insult us all. Bazinga. All right? Here we go. All right? Oh, get the gloves off. Mr. Trump, your presidency, I love your presidency. I call it disgrace the nation. <laughs> You're not the POTUS. You're the bloatus. You're the glutton with the button. You're a regular gorge, Washington. You're the presidents. But you're turning into a real prictator. <laughs> Sir, you attract more skinheads than free Rogaine. You have more people marching against you than cancer. You talk like a sign language gorilla who got hit in the head. In fact, the only thing your mouth is good for is being Vladimir Putin's <laughs> holster. Your presidential library. Your presidential library. Your presidential library is going to be a kids' menu and a couple of jugs magazine. The only thing smaller than your hands is your tax returns. And you can take that any way you want. We got a great show for you tonight. <laughs>